Hello everybody and welcome to another episode. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to properly remove and replace the EGR valve along with the EGR cooler from any Peugeot 508 with the engine 2.0 HDI out there. So today I'm working on this car and right here, as you can see, I have the brand new EGR valve along with the EGR cooler from this car. Also, this car which I'm working on today, it's made in the year 2013 and it's a hybrid one. So it also have an electric motor, but this is not important. If you, for example, have a car which is a normal motor with the 2.0 HDI like I have right here, this video is for you and this method and the steps which I'm going to show you all today are working exactly for your car. So as you can see, right here is the engine. You have to lift this cover up. And if you want to reach the EGR valve on this car, you have to remove the throttle body. You have to remove some plastic from around the cables, the connectors, and also one hose, which is going into the intercooler. And after that, you will be able to reach the EGR cooler from this engine. So as you can see, you have to remove all of these screws from right here. You have to remove the dipstick. You have to remove all the connectors from around it. You have to remove the screws, which are securing the throttle body mounted to the intake manifold. And also in some cases, you can also so need to remove the fuel lines but in some cases there is not necessarily like it is not necessarily today also i recommend all to remove the air filter with its box completely out from the engine because in this way you'll have a lot of room and you'll have more space to work with and it will be a little bit easier for you to do this kind of job to remove the air filter you have to lift it up it will come out from two corners you'll have two plastic clips and you have to disconnect the connector from the uh, math sensor and also one um, big uh, clamp which is securing the hoses mounted to the air filter Alright everybody, so with all of these things being said, you'll have to follow my advices, you'll have to remove the air filter completely out from the engine, you'll have to remove the metal clamp, and you'll have to remove the connector from the MEF sensor, and after that you'll have to lift up the plastic from the top cover of the bumper, and you'll have to lift the plastic hose and put it away from the engine. After that you'll have to remove the other screws and other bolts from the intake manifold, but I'm going to show you exactly what you have to do from here. Also, the original length of this video was about um, 1 hour and 20 minutes, but I cut it and made it a little bit shorter and I also made it only 30 minutes for you guys to be able to watch it a little bit faster than normally. Alright everybody, so after I remove the air intake with the air filter box itself from the car and also the hose which is going from the throttle body to the intercooler, you can go ahead and disconnect all the connectors from the intake manifold and from the surroundings and after that you can remove the throttle body, you have to remove 6 bolts and the throttle body will come out from its place. To completely remove the throttle body from the car, you'll have to disconnect the vacuum line which is going into the throttle body because you'll have one line which is connected to it, as you can see right here, and you'll have to pull it out from the throttle body and in this way you can put it away from the car. After that, the next step which you have to do is to disconnect this entire plastic part which is mounted right underneath the throttle body and right underneath the intake manifold and which is secured with three screws. We'll have to remove three screws which are securing it mounted in place. After that, we'll have one connector in the left side and probably you'll have the 10mm bolt which is securing the dipstick mounted to it. After you remove all of these things, you will be able to pull it out from the engine.
Right here, it is this huge plastic part. You have three screws which are securing it mounted in place in those locations. And after that, you have to disconnect it and pull it away from the engine. Alright everybody, so now you all have a closer look of the EGR cooler and where it's mounted on this car. As you can see, right here it is the EGR cooler with the EGR valve itself. And if you want to remove it, you'll have to remove those two screws from right here. After that, you have to remove this bigger screw right here in the right side. Then you have two more screws which are securing it mounted to the engine. You'll have this one at the top and the other one from the middle. Then you have to go in the left side, you'll have this screw from right here in the top. And after that, you'll have to disconnect the coolant hose, which is attached to it. After that, you'll have to remove this 10mm bolt, which is securing the dipstick pipe mounted to the EGR cooler. And after that, you'll have two more screws, which are securing this pipe mounted to the intake manifold. You'll have to remove this screw from right here, and the other one, as you can see, it's right here behind it. But you can't remove this one unless you remove the EGR cooler first. And after that, you'll have to move it a little bit out of the way. And then you will be able to remove the other screw, which is going right here underneath the intake manifold. Also, don't forget to remove this vacuum line which is going into the EGR valve.
All right, everybody. So as you can see, this is how the EJR valve along with the EJR cooler is looking on this car. Those are the original parts installed by Peugeot. And as you can see, this is how it's looking on this car. And in my case, I'm replacing this part because the previous owner installed bad coolant into the car. And because of that, the coolant uh, corroded the EJR valve along with the EJR cooler. And the EJR valve has a hole in it and the coolant is leaking out from the EJR valve. So this is why I'm replacing it with a brand new today. Also, I recommend all to clean the engine block very well from the bad sealant where the EJR cooler is attached to it. And as you can see, in my case, I cleaned everything very well. Everything is as smooth as possible. And from here, I'm going to apply a new thin layer of sealant because it's better to be safe than sorry. So I recommend all to apply some sealant even if the EJR valve is coming with a brand new gasket. I recommend all to apply some sealant, a very thin layer because it's better to be safe than sorry. It's better to know that you did a very good job because if you, for example, don't apply some sealant and you'll have some leaks in the future, you'll have to disassemble everything back together and you don't want this so feel free to do whatever thing you want in my case i recommend all to do like this but if you don't want to do like this you can do it in your way okay everybody so from here this is the brand new ejr valve along with the ejr cooler i place the gasket over it and from here i'm going to put it back in the engine you'll have to assemble everything from here in the exact same way as you disassembled the original one you'll have to put the ejr valve you'll have to install the pipe from the intake manifold and after that we have to install the ejr valve back on the engine
Alright everybody, so as also, I assembled everything back together as it was before. I'm almost done with the job, but I'm not going to continue to assemble anything because I want to do a pressure test on the coolant system. So from here, what I'm, what I'm about to do is to put some coolant into the, into the reservoir of the coolant and I'm going to pressurize the system. I'm going to use a special pump which will help me to put pressure into the system and in this way, with the system pressurized, I can check for any leaks. I can check for the brand new EGR valve to see if it has any leaks, if everything is installed properly or not. And only after that, if I see that the vacuum is uh, still uh, uh, working properly, if I see that the pressure is not going down, this is meaning that the system is uh, closed. I have no leaks from anywhere. And from here, I can go ahead and assemble everything back together as it was before. Also, I recommend all to put a little bit um, uh, more coolant than normally because you'll have the maximum level and I recommend all to put a little bit over the maximum because when you will drive the car, the thermostat will open and the coolant will go back into the new EGR cooler and the coolant will drop from the coolant reservoir. So this is why I recommend all to put a little bit more over the maximum level because when the coolant will flush itself, it will go back to the normal level. Also, after you finish this job, I recommend all to remove the breeder valve. For example, you will find one breeder valve in the right side, right here underneath the hose, which is going into the air filter box. You have to breathe the system and you'll see that the air will come out. And when you see that it's coming out coolant, you have to close it and that's it. So as you can see, I put some pressure on the system and as you can see, the gauge is looking that I have a lot of pressure in the system. And from here, I'll have to check for any leaks. I'll have to do some checks with the new EGR valve and you have to check for the hoses if everything is tight or not and if you see no leaks if you see that the pressure is not going down this is meaning that the system is closed this is meaning that everything is good and you can go ahead and assemble the rest of the things back together as it was before so as you can see i have the exact same pressure on the gauge so this is meaning that the system is closed i have no coolant leaks so from here i can go ahead and assemble the rest of the things back together on the car Alright everybody, so I'm done with installing all the parts back on the vehicle. From here I'm going to start the car and I'm going to show you all exactly how the car is starting and how the car is behaving after I finished this kind of job. So this will be the first time when I'm going to start the vehicle, so just watch exactly how the car is working. Alright everybody, so as or so, the engine started perfectly fine, so everything is good to go from here. I'll have to drive the car, I'll have to do some checks after that, and that's it. Thank you for watching, this is how to replace and remove the EGR valve along with the EGR cooler from any Peugeot 508 or any other car with the engine like this one. If you like this video and found it informative, please leave a like and comment down below. See you next time.